God really has led me to speak on the Spirit the last few weeks, and this, this is a good one here to add to what we've already done. The person and power and provision of the paraclete, the helper. It's going to be a good time to look at the Word this morning. I mean, those kids were great, weren't they? Yes, they did a great job. Bob Fisher will be here on the 30th of the month. Don't forget that. I think we'll be all day long doing things on that 30th. Jesus actually applied the term to the Holy Spirit, the paraclete, to be an advocate, our comforter, our helper. Let's ask the Lord to speak to us today. Father, we thank you for your word that is so true, so real. And Father, I pray that you'll speak to us today through this message and through the words that have been given to us today to share the wonders of your spirit. And we thank you for changing our lives for the word of God will never return void, but it will accomplish that which you purpose. We believe that today in Christ's name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Up here on the front seats, we also have some real good teaching and understanding on the baptism of the Holy Spirit that Terry has put together. And you really may want to pick one of these up. And you may want to not only pick one up for yourself, but pick one up maybe to give to someone that may have interest in the Holy Spirit. I think there's a time in which we live, there are people that are hungry for more of God. And this is something that could be really a beneficial thing. And also, she also has with her today some things concerning our Roman study for, for Wednesday night. So be prepared to check Miss Terry out there and see her. She'll provide that for you. We have the Holy Spirit sheets up here of teaching on the Holy Spirit on the front seat here as well. The, the New Testament was, as you know, was written in Greek and Aramaic. But the word paraclete is a Latin transliteration, transliteration from the Greek word that is used for that. And the Holy Spirit, comforter, counselor, advocate, helper, one called to be alongside. I like that, don't you? How many knows we need some help? Need some help. Somebody needs to help that boy. And Jesus applied this term to the Holy Spirit in John. It's used four times in the book of John and one time in his epistle. One of those verses is John 14, 6. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you a helper to be with you forever. How many knows we need a helper? to come alongside, to speak to us, to, to counsel us, to instruct us, to guide us. We need help. And I think we understand that today more than ever before. The Holy Spirit empowers us to do what is humanly impossible. I said the Holy Spirit empowers us to do what is humanly impossible. He, the Holy Spirit, is the supernatural expression of God on planet Earth. He, the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit, is the supernatural expression of God on planet Earth. Not someone like us, <laughs> prone to weariness and limitations. Instead, a heavenly helper who is ever strong, powerful, never tires, and is always near. Come on. Amen. He's always near. My father, I was telling Terry this morning, my father 
wrote a little booklet during the early days of his ministry when I was young. It was on the Holy Spirit question and answers on the Holy Spirit baptism. And in that booklet, he actually speaks of a time at Harvard and Yale years ago, back in the 50s, when the Spirit, the Holy Spirit fell in classrooms at Harvard and Yale both. And now these universities, which are Ivy League schools, including Brown, uh, things are not quite holy these days. There at these universities, they have all kinds of things they celebrate, which is everything but the righteousness of God and the holiness of God. But there was a time there was a witness of the Spirit on those campuses. And those, those universities were started for the express purpose to train ministers to carry out the Great Commission throughout the world. That's what these universities were started for and the purpose of them. And I'm, they've long since lost that purpose. There's a lot of weariness among us. We are weary from loads we carry, and we're weary from the challenges that we face. We have questions we cannot answer. We have problems we cannot solve. We live in a culture that's in a downward spiral, spiral down, downward. It's true. I mean, knows we have problems we can't solve. We see it every day in our society. We have challenges that we don't know what to do with in our society, in our culture. This past week in Raleigh, North Carolina, the tragedy of mass shootings that just, Joan and I just, we, we caught it, we were watching the news and then all of a sudden they went to the mass shooting in Raleigh. It seems like we live in a culture of death whether it's abortion or whether it's something else, whether it's video games where a child, by the time they're 18, they, they actually have seen 10,000 murders, whether through video or whatever. But we live in a culture of death, and it's, it's a very, very challenging time that we live. It's questions we cannot answer, problems we can't seem to solve, a culture in a downward spiral. But what if... There was help. Someone to walk with you and guide you and shoulder the load. Sounds good. And what if this help was heaven sent? Luke 24, 49, And now I will send the Holy Spirit upon you, just as my Father promised. Stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. Harvey Cox from Harvard, Professor Harvey Cox, wrote a book years ago on fire from heaven. It's a very interesting book. I can tell you, I have looked at that book numerous times. And it was interesting. He goes into the Chicago World Fair where they built this shining white city. And there was a one part of that World's Fair. They had the, the, the religions of the world to come together. And they call it the New Pentecost. But it was an ecumenical group of uh, nothing but ecumenical thinking. And uh, they had a fire. They had fire. They had a fire that burnt down all the buildings. Uh, but it wasn't Holy Ghost fire. Interesting. Harvey Cox, fire from heaven, Harvard professor. If you love me... John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, comforter, advocate, some has used some versions, that he may abide with you forever. The Holy Spirit, the comforter, the advocate will abide with us forever. I love that. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. 
John 14, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. Romans 8, 26. Is there fire in your belly and is it running low? Is life sometimes an uphill struggle? And I like the terminology drip by drip and day by day. You feel like something is missing. I think all of us at one time or another have been there. There is a heavenly sent helper. The Holy Spirit is giving your life, giving life renewing. He's a life giving, life renewing friend who strengthens us. And he will lead us all the way home. Aren't you glad you got a guide who will lead you all the way home? We loved our guide in Israel. Barb, he was great, wasn't he? And he, he took us to all the different archaeological sites and the different places. He explained things. He whipped out his phone. He could pull up the scriptures. He was very versed in the scriptures, versed in three or four languages. So we'd go to a particular site, and he would whip out the phone, and he'd read the scriptures pertaining to that site. Sure made the difference to have a guide like that in Israel. <laughs> But we have a guide of, from heaven that is guiding us, and he will guide us all the way home. He's life-giving. He's life-renewing. He's a life-renewing friend to strengthen us. In his new book, Help is Here, Max Lucado gives us at least two personal testimonies, and I'm going to give the first one now. Now, you've got to understand... Max Lucado has been reported that he has at least 154 million books in circulation. Do you understand what I'm saying? 154 plus million books in circulation. He's written numerous books, but that many in circulation. That's very influential. If you sell 100,000 books, you are considered a very successful author. We're talking about 154 plus million books. The first of his personal testimonies goes like this. The f he tells of a time of desperation in his life. He said, I maintained a game face for three or four years. I ran out of fuel. Suddenly I could not sleep. Our dog was sleeping. Even our goldfish was sleeping. I thought that was funny. I was a dejected figure and confused and depleted disciple. I was a dejected figure, a confused and depleted disciple. My prayers were moans. My faith was a frazzled thread. Does anybody identify with any of this testimony here? I couldn't even summon the energy to fake it anymore. I was honest with God. Turns out God had a soft spot in his heart for an honest prayer. And he does, don't he? Come on. Little by little, I began to sense the Spirit as he led me with a kind touch. I've often heard it said in this phrase that God, the Father, Son, and Spirit, God is a perfect gentleman. He comes as a perfect gentleman. He said, little by little, I began to sense the Spirit as he led me with a kind touch. He wooed me with a whisper. I requested strength, and he gave it. I prayed for vitality and joy, both return. Vitality and joy, both return. The long winter thaw into a welcome spring. He says, the long winter thawed into a welcome spring. His second testimony we'll share a little bit later. One day he said, while studying for a message, 
I read the words Jesus used to describe the Holy Spirit. Comforter, friend. I now call him our heaven-sent helper. He's our ally. He's our champion. He's our advocate. He's our guide. He comforts. He directs. He indwells. He transforms. He sustains. Someday he'll deliver us to the heavenly home. Come on. I like that. He's our ally. Do you like that? He's our champion, our advocate. You ever need an attorney? Someone to represent you? I represented myself one time. I took my little briefcase and they thought I was an attorney. And so I pleaded my case and the guy real, did real good. <laughs> but anyway, that was an interesting story. But the Holy Spirit is our ally, our champion, our advocate, our guide. He comforts, he directs. It's amazing how he directs us. Throughout my ministry, God has directed me to land to buy. In the, it's a matter of moments in time. He would direct me to places to go to purchase property for building churches. And God directs us in any kind of direction that we need for our lives. I know that Pastor David and Becky have been directed their lives by the Spirit of God. He is our champion, our advocate, our guide, our comfort. He directs. How many times in our lives have we felt like we were out of fuel? Out of fuel. And then God comes and the Holy Spirit comes and refills us. We learned during the charismatic renewal in some of the great meetings, we realized that people leaked. Did you know you leak? You leak. You ever had a pot that leaked? Well, we leak. We need to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we, we, we lose sight of that He is our ally, that He is our guide, He is our champion. He does transform and indwell and sustains. And we need that refilling of His Spirit in our lives. Acts 1.8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I like that. The Holy Spirit comes with power. I like the way the translation given rendition by the Amplified Bible. When the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, you shall receive might, ability of the Holy Spirit. Might, ability. Power to do good choices. Power to keep promises. Power to silence the inner voices of fear and failure. Power to get out of bed and get on with your life. If Jesus rose from the bed, from the dead, you can get out of bed. <laughs> Amen. Power to get busy about right things in the right way. Power to face the unexpected. Man, how many knows there's a curveball in your life every so often? But the Holy Spirit gives us power to face the unexpected. And then we have to ask ourselves on a regular basis, maybe we need something to check our power level. I know that when my daughter bought us a new grill, that came with a thing that you could put on your tank, and it gives you what your the, the level of your propane. And when it starts getting low, you know you need to take the tank and get it refilled. We need something, some kind of a gauge that tells us we're getting a little bit low. I think we kind of know, don't we? We kind of know. How is your power level? When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, He gives us energy, strength, enthusiasm for life. Your step has a spring to it. Your voice has a song to it. 
if that doesn't describe you, consider the possibility of a life-giving relationship with the Holy Spirit. No more walking this path alone. No more carrying the weight you were not intended to bear alone. It's time for us to enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit and experience the life that He offers us, all of us. Amen. We need the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need that level of power. I tell you what, you find someone who's just been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they actually need to be locked up for about a month. Because they are dangerous people. We we had we had a Baptist preacher. I think I mentioned this numerous times, but I heard about this Baptist preacher that got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I had him to come for a week in Tennessee to do a revival, and for a church of thirty five members, thirty five forty members is all. We were a brand new home mission church. It didn't last a, a week. It lasted eight weeks, two services a day, with accumulated attendance of over seven eight thousand people. Johnny Cash came in that during that revival and gave his testimony. We're talking about this this Baptist preacher that got baptized in the Holy Spirit. He was something else. He was dangerous. <laughs> Tell you the truth, it was amazing to see what God did. Max, Max Licato said, God does not want a bunch of stressed out, worn out, done in, washed up Christians representing him in the world. Can I read that again? God does not want a bunch of stressed out, worn out, done in, washed up Christians representing him in the world. He wants us to be fresher day by day, hour by hour. We have a helper, a divine instructor. He will save us from the cul-de-sac of confusion and the dead end of doubt. Come on. He does this by enrolling us in the primary course of his university. And I call it Jesus Christ 101. Come on. He goes on to say, and I really like this, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Be not transformed, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't let this world squeeze you in its mold, Romans 12, 1. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. You cannot hear the Spirit if you're listening to them. Listen to that. You cannot hear the Spirit if you're listening to them. You can't soar like an evil if you're running around with dumb sheep. I didn't say that. Max did. So I can get by with it. I don't know why he'd say such a hard thing. How I many know sheep are dumb? They're cute little things, but the Bible, that's why they why we're called sheep. You you know about it, right? You know, you know. Doug, he knows. Chuck, Chuck knows the story about it. You can't soar like an evil if you're running with dumb sheep. The scripture employs more than a dozen metaphors to describe the work of the Spirit. Do you want to be wowed by Jesus? The Holy Spirit is the ultimate teacher. Do you want your prayers? Do your prayers seem weak? He's our intercessor, Romans 8, 26. Do you struggle to obey God's command? The Spirit is the wind of God. Are you unsure of your salvation? The Holy Spirit is is the seal upon which upon the saint the spirit is the dove of peace who calms us I said the spirit is the dove of peace who calms us the gift giver who equips us the river of living water who flows out of us to refresh the world it makes all the difference my father had services that would last to two and three and four in the morning way back when 
and a lot of people in, in the church worked in factories and one of the factory owners he came to him and he was just just crazy he said i just don't understand your people they go to your church and they stay there to two or three in the morning and they come to work when they're supposed to and they work better than anybody else how is that possible i just don't understand that how you can keep them at church he said i don't keep them there but listen it makes all the difference to be refreshed by the Holy Spirit. He says the Spirit of God is not a computer to be programmed. He is a person to be welcomed. The help you need is here. And the Spirit to infuse you with power. Throw open the door. Swing wide the gate. Stand on the threshold and say, Welcome, come in. Welcome, Holy Spirit. You're welcome in this place. I am the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're welcome in this place. Come on. Yes. Ask the Spirit to infuse you with His power. Max gives his second personal testimony in his book. After 40 years of ministry has left me convinced we do not have what it takes to heal the hurting world. He realized that. He knew that. We need help. Everybody say, we need help. We need help. We need help. He says, I was convinced we do not have what it takes to heal this hurting world. He said, one of the great tragedies of the last century has been the division of the church over the existence of spiritual gifts such as tongues and miracles. And boy, that is a, such a true statement. When I was with David Wilkerson years ago, and he would speak about the Holy Spirit, even on television, we were on a talk show together. He, he was just—he was just so plain spoken and so interesting the way he explained stuff. He said people get all upset about tongues. He said when you go to the shoe store to buy a shoe, you don't ask it where it has a tongue in it or not. You just buy the shoe and wear it. You just put the shoe on and wear it. Shoes have tongues in them. The way they're made. They're made that with a tongue. Just put it on and wear it. Not a problem. But Max says, the great tragedy of the last century has been the division of the church over the existence of spiritual gifts and tongues and miracles. Many God-fearing Christians are convinced that these powerful gifts were discontinued when the apostles died. I know this line of reasoning well. I was among them. I taught that these more demonstrative gifts were served only to launch the church. Later, I wondered, where does a New Testament author ever say that certain gifts will cease upon the completion of Scripture? I found none. On the contrary, the Scripture says, 14.1 of Corinthians, to desire spiritual gifts. Paul made it clear that he expected the gift would continue until Jesus returned. 1 Corinthians 1 7. You Corinthians are, are not lacking any gift as you wait for the revealing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Great work, great line of thought. And then the most convincing of all, at least to me, is the fact that the Holy Spirit chose to grace me with some very gifts, the very gifts that I once discounted. Think about it. One of the more most surprising gifts came to me at the age of 64. Now I talk about a lot of years of ministry and a lot of books that he's written. Over a period of several months I asked Jesus for a greater feeling 
of his spirit. I like this next phrase, so I had Joan underline it. I requested that he not hold back. <laughs> I love that. I requested that he don't hold back. A lady came to my father, and she she was a very she was of the blue bloods of the community. She was of the well known movers and shakers of the community. She she said, "Now, Pastor Hicks." I like what I see these people have, but I'm highly educated and I'm, I'm not of a person of emotion. So I, I kind of want what they have, but I'm a little different than them. My father said, ma'am, you've glow coated yourself with so many things you think you are and that you're not. I can't tell you what's going to happen when I lay hands on you. So you better be prepared. He laid hands on her, and she showed off more than the rest of them. She was a lot more emotional than what she thought she was, and she wasn't quite as sophisticated as she thought she was. She made a scene worse than the rest of the people. Another occasion, another occasion, the mayor of the city walked into my father's church, and the board members came around and said, Pastor, we got to. We, we need to be careful today and be be a little bit quieter today and not not let things get too out there, you know, with the spirit, because the mayor is here. And wouldn't you know it? Wouldn't you know it? The lady that goes off went off that day. But anyway, <laughs> you know my. You know, and and the mayor, as he was leaving the service, he said, "Wow, that was that's something I had never seen before." I said, oh, "I've got to come back. This was interesting." And then another time, they were having a tent revival, and they had this thing set up. You know, this door to kind of like a tabernacle door. It was a wooden door attached to a tent thing, and and they were having service and. The lady got up and started going off a little bit, and my father said, Now, Lord, we, we want to keep things right here, so help us with this. And my father said that the door came off his hinges and floored the lady, and she laid her out for the rest of the service. She was, But anyway, she was kind of prone to get in the flesh a little bit, but the door landed on her, and she kept her out for the rest of the service. But anyway, <laughs> I digressed here. He said, I requested that he not hold back, but that he pour out on me all the gifts he ever ordained me to have. In the pre-dawn hours of a summer morning, as I sat on the veranda and prayed, I began to experience a heavenly prayer language. From deep within me, there welled a flow of utterance. The feeling was one of delight and worship. During the charismatic renewal, uh, we, we got calls at our church. We had a, 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 a old lady who was an architect's wife, a, a very famous architect in town. And she says, uh, uh, just Reverend Hicks, and you do pastor a full gospel church of the assembly. I said, yes. She says, could you and your wife please come over to my house? She says, something has happened to me and I don't understand. She said, I was praying the other morning and I was just in deep, intense prayer before God. And she said, I don't know what happened to me. But she said, all of a sudden, something began to well up in my spirit. It just began to, in my spirit, began to well up in me. And I began to speak in a, in a language that I, I do not know how it happened. Could you come and tell me what's happened to me? She had never been taught. She didn't know anything about the baptism. But in a moment of intense prayer, it just all of a sudden just automatically came. Nobody was shaking her. Nobody was spitting on her, you know, moving her tongue or anything. She said, I was just, I was just praying. In this quiet moment, and the Spirit of God began to speak out of me. God. And during the charismatic renewal, over 20 million Catholics experienced the same thing. 
David Duplessis was among some of those Catholics that he ministered to worldwide. That was worldwide. It was amazing. Our God dwells in a supernatural realm. The unseen and miraculous are his stock and trade. The Holy Spirit is the ultimate gift giver. I said the Holy Spirit is the ultimate gift giver. He garnishes his children with supernatural abilities that glorify God, bless the needy, and edify the church. Come, Holy Spirit, our helper. We desperately need you in our personal life and in our church. Max Licato said in his book, Help is Here. Pretty amazing story. And I had to share that with you because I think it's pretty dramatic. Pretty dramatic. Yeah, we're going to sing what we sang last week. Let's stand together. Good.
rain of your presence fall on me together in the middle here if we could just over here in the middle if you could just move away in the middle we'll close in prayer let's let's do that come holy spirit i need you come sweet spirit i pray to have somebody come and help fix things, do things that we couldn't do. But for, for what we're talking about in our lives here, the Spirit is our advocate, our counselor. He's our helper. He'll help us. That's what He's there for. To come alongside is another phraseology that you, to come alongside. Oh, man. Inside us, to guide us, to counsel us, to di to direct us, to to feel, to to experience His presence. Oh, thank you, Lord. 
one more time. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. I need you. Come, sweet Spirit. I pray. of a glass and you're pouring water in the glass and you fill the glass full and th the Methodists actually used the term back in the late 1800s early 1900s the Methodists referred to the baptism in the spirit as the overflow I've seen it in books from the Methodist church it says Methodist church my father had a book from the Methodist church and, it, and in the name of the book was, this is Methodist now, late 1800s, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. I'm afraid they've lost that. Too bad. Some still desire it. But as a denomination, they've gone, gone the other way. But the glass, you keep pouring water in it, and what happens, Joanne, if you keep pouring, it just, overfl it just overflows. It? My father said, God wants to fill your cup and overflow your saucer as well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Pastor David, close us out here. I know you got a few words for us. We need thee. Oh, we need thee. Every hour we need thee. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're coming soon, that we're in these closing days of time, but there's still the light of the glorious gospel that can shine into this dark, dark world. Satan, you're going about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And Lord, you told us as it was in the days of Noah, as it was in the days of Lot. In the days of Noah, it was violent. Lord, we see our precious police officers being shot. We see people who have no regard for life. But, oh God, you are our life. We pray, oh God, for a revival in these last days. For you, you, you also said, as it was in the days of Sodom, and we look everywhere, people are falling into such lust and such situations of jealousy and rage thank you Lord God that we found you and you found us thank you Lord God that you are our loving Savior that you hold us in the hollow of your hand and we have nothing to fear thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit who rides within us we thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this congregation. Thank you for this pastor and the anointed messages. Thank you for the music as we praise you. You are in this place, Lord, and we thank you for it. We give you praise, honor, and glory. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor David. Don't forget we have lunch. And if you forgot to bring something, we brought something. So come on. Come on eat.